I don't think there's any hesitancy, any question in my mind about it, simply because I think that when you're the Los Angeles Lakers, considering how, fall, how, how, how precipitous their fall from grace has been, you don't have the luxury of sitting back in a comfort zone and waiting for somebody that you want to come to you as if you're the coveted franchise. Certainly they may be. Certainly Paul George has made it very, very clear to them that he has every intention of being a Los Angeles Laker by next summer. But I think because of how Jim Buss has contributed con to contaminating this brand, this franchise in such a way, I don't trust time as being on my side when it comes to acquiring a marquee talent like a Paul George. I'm not saying that it makes the greatest business sense. I'm not saying that all of those things are things that don't apply. I'm saying you have to shove them aside because of the times that you're living in and how much that brand has been sullied. When I look at Paul George, he is a marquee player, a, a, a budgeting superstar, somebody that has the potential to make a difference. Can he do it by himself? No. Is he going to win a championship, particularly with the Golden State Warriors and the San Antonio Spurs around? No. But he is a star that has the potential to resurrect the Laker brand and the Laker franchise towards respectability. And once that happens, with Magic Johnson at the helm, now you've opened up the floodgates to potentially get better. The Los Angeles Lakers have won titles in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, in the year 2000. And, and, and now you're, you're, you're aiming for 2020 and beyond. Do they have that potential with Magic Johnson? Absolutely. But the first order of business is to remind the fans, not just in Laker Nation, but everywhere that stars always want to come to Tinseltown, to Hollywood, and I think Paul George helps pull that off to, to facilitate, to jumpstart that process re being revisited again. A lot of times we'll have debates, and it's easy because it's cut and dried. I'm right, you're wrong. And then you make a very interesting argument for the wrong position usually, but ultimately you have no chance. Please. Not only because of my superior debating skills, but because I'm simply right. I choose the right side of the issue. You are still a baby when it comes to debate. In this you're case, learning. you're learning. In I'm this proud case, of you. however, I'm very proud of this your learning. is a this is not so cut and dried because it really depends on the asking price. Ultimately, my answer is no. You do not trade for Paul George now because I'm assuming it takes either the number two overall pick or Brandon Ingram, who was the number two overall pick, by the way. D'Angelo Russell was also the number two overall pick. And the reason it kills me, it galls me to see him used to get yourself out of the Mozgov deal is what the number two pick really represents in the draft is you stinking for an entire season. That's how you pick second in the draft. You have to stink out loud. Unless you're Boston. Ice. Well, unless you have a great GM who can <laughs> trade for those Boston. types of picks. But right. generally, in the Lakers' case, it meant they stunk all season long. D'Angelo Russell represented that. And just to get out of a stupid deal that you made on an unforced error to sign Mozgov, you got to use that pick to get out of it, that whole season down the drain for nothing, just to get out of a deal that you didn't have to sign, it galls me. I don't want the Lakers to do that again. Brandon Ingram represents a lost season, and so does the number two pick this year. You cannot spend that kind of resource on a guy who wants to sign with you anyway. And by the way, you know where stars want to sign? In a market like the Lakers, like L.A., with a brand like the Lakers, or let me be more specific, with the Lakers, so long as those stars feel they're being competently run, they don't have any cap issues, and they have a good young talent base coming up, which the Lakers had before they signed Lou Aldang and Mozgov. Therefore, you do not trade for Paul George. You wait till he's a free agent unless if, they wanna, if the Pacers want to take salary back in the form of Lou Aldang, and they would be content to take, say, a Julius Randle, who, by the way, also represents a lost season. He was the seventh overall pick. It also means you stunk all year, but at least it was the seventh and not the second. You want to take back, say, Julius Randle, the, the 27th and 28th picks in this year's draft, with the, which the Lakers acquired just now, the 28th pick, and a contract like Lou Aldang's for Paul George? Okay, because now you get out of that other stupid deal you gave to Lou Aldang, and you're not trading away your most valuable assets, which are the number two overall picks, Ingram and this year's. If you want to say that's the deal, then I'll say, sure, trade for Paul George now. You'll have his bird rights. That's valuable. You'll be decent right away with Brooke Lopez in the post and Paul George on the wing and, and Lonzo Ball ostensibly Likely running the point. team. 
already you got something. But that's the extent of it. There has to be value for the Lakers. Get out of a bad deal. Don't use any really valuable assets. If either Ingram or the number two pick are involved, that is insane. Don't do it. I think you're tripping. And the reason I think you're tripping is because I do understand that Brandon Ingram is only 19 years of age. And I look, and I look at him. But his mind is old. Let me, let me finish. I think the, guy, the guy's got a lot of potential. I'm not saying that he doesn't. This is no knock against Brandon Ingram. But if you're the Lakers, the last four years have been abysmal. This is the Los Angeles Lakers that we're talking about here. Everybody's walking around here acting like Paul George is 35 years of age. Paul George is 27. He turns 28 next That's not May. young. Like, 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 excuse me. It relatively is. And let me, let me also say this, because you have to think about the times that we're living in. Can we make the argument that Paul George has about 10 years left in the no. league? I think we can. No, not, I think we did. not I as think you're we conceiving of him. Wait a Paul George, do you think oh, of him now? How am I going to years. assume? How am I conceiving of him? An all star caliber no, 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 player. No, excuse me. He's got at least five years as an all star caliber player. I don't think so. Without question. I don't That's think so. That's nonsense. Please. Really? Please don't, no, no, Paul George? Think about not the an all star for the next five years? I don't know. Maybe at the, on the outside. Have you five watched years. it? Please. On the outside. Nonsense. No? Paul George is a star. Paul George yeah. knows how to play. Paul George has advanced to an Eastern Conference Finals. He's tasted some level of success. He doesn't shrink in all big moments. He shows up in some, hasn't shown up in others. But the brother can play. Let's also take into account this reality. He's a two-way player. Let's also take into account this reality. Brandon Ingram, again, he's a puppy. He's young in this business. Shot about 27% from three-point range. Average 28 points. I mean, 28 minutes. Only about nine points. He's got an upside, no doubt. But if you're talking about Paul George, what is he going to be over the next five years? You can so, sign so, him without so, giving so up. So when England. we're looking at Brandon Ingram, I'm saying when we're looking, if you if you wait. But what I'm saying is it's a risk because I don't yes. care what anybody says. I am not going to assume that I get to sit back and wait and Paul George is going to come to me if I'm okay, the Lakers. Let me quickly